Welcome, my name is Georgios Verbena. I am an astrologer and I'll be talking about Pluto entering Aquarius on the 20th of January 2024 and with an astrology update until the 26th where the full moon will be in Leo at the end of the month. So as everybody knows who watched anything about astrology, there has been a Sun conjunction Pluto transit on the 20th of January and this is a very significant event because this is one of the rarest aspects we've ever seen actually we've never seen <laughs> this aspect because you see this is not about Sun conjunction Pluto this is about the fact that both Pluto and the Sun enter a sign at the exact same time, on the same day. Now, this has never been recorded throughout history. We do not know of a single time that this has been observed. So nobody knows what this means, really. Nobody knows what's the significance. But since it's an, an anomaly, is very significant because you see many famous prophets throughout history like Nostradamus for example have predicted what is going to happen based on anomalies anomalies were picked and he said okay because of this anomaly this is happening so this is a significant shift you know a lot of people are theorizing when the age of Aquarius began this could be the beginning because this is going to be a 20 year period until Pluto leaves Aquarius in 2044. And what does it mean to have this shift? Well, let me give you a little lesson in astrology because the basics are very important to understand what is happening at any given time. The sun represents illumination. So that is what is conjunction with Pluto. Illuminating who or what? Consciousness. The divine masculine is represented by who's in charge of you, of your body, of your life. And that is the sun. So whoever is in charge must be conscious to make decisions. The divine feminine is represented by many planets including Pluto. Pluto represents fate, which we cannot control. The fate which most of us are afraid of, of facing. It's especially concerning that part of you, that you are hiding. Because should that part be exposed, it makes you vulnerable. Because everybody tries to control fate. All right. If you watch movies, if you pay attention to what's written in books, if you pay attention around you, the day and age we're living in now, everybody is trying to control everything all the time. Pluto is no exception. So why is it significant? Because you cannot control fate. You cannot control your destiny. Everybody's trying to do something that is insanity. You can't do that. The sun is highlighting that part. So you are becoming aware, collectively, of what you cannot change. Actually, it's funny, because isn't that what Pluto is about? Isn't it about change? Isn't that supposed to blow up in our face and tell us, here's what you need to change? You can't change fate. So how can it be both change and fate at the same time? Simple. Because that which is fate, it comes from the bottom, it comes from the underworld. And in the underworld, there is no stagnation. There is no death of you. Because that's where you come from. You come from that dark space 
of your unconscious. You come from the past and that conditioning, that layer has changed you, has manipulated you, has lied to you. Because there's many lies in this day and age about our identity. And our identity is represented by the sun. So Pluto is trying to change that by showing you fate. <laughs> Trying to change who, the sun, your self-image. So it's time to change your self-image. Where? How? Aquarius. So Aquarius, what is the image that Aquarius tries to project into this realm? It's an image of freedom, of individuality, of uniqueness. It's an, it's an image of somebody who cannot be controlled. Now, this is dramatically different from what we're just coming out of. Because we're coming out of Capricorn. And in Capricorn, everything is about control. And Pluto is about things you cannot control. So, sounds quite nice. You know, I mean... Pluto and Aquarius, they must be working together, right? Yes, of course. So that freedom that everybody's looking for, we find in our fate. But there's the programming. There's this, oh no, but I want my freedom if I have fate. That's not freedom. That's right. There is no freedom in fate. And yet, that is only an illusion. Because fate isn't really about being able to make choices. Because you have already chosen. Pluto is the choice you made that you are unaware of. Pluto is the desire you have which you do not need to know but which you do need to actualize, to evolve. To change, you must do what you will. Because Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. Now Mars is the Lord of will, everything about desire. So Pluto is the deepest, most unconscious, most primitive, primal desire that you have. And the sun is illuminating that. And that is why desire is fate. So if your desire changes, so does your fate. But Pluto is the desire that is so raw, so deep, you don't want to change it. This is the desire that you're born with. And this is the desire that you die with. You see, you were born with it and you die with it. You cannot change it. You don't want to change it. But the control system does. It's the lies around us which want to control your desire. Because if you control somebody's desire, you control their actions. If you control their actions, you control them. And that is why Pluto is associated with things we hide, because everybody is trying to control Pluto. Everybody wants to control you, tells you, oh, you want to do this, but you can't. You can't do this. You're not free. You're a robot. Submit and be destroyed. And that is why Pluto is a lot of destruction. Because it shows where people try to destroy you. They try to kill you. Because they try to control fate. <laughs> so, the sun is our confidence. Finally we're realizing... Everybody's been trying to control us here, but... We can decide... To step out of it. We can choose... To just do it. But what is it? What is it that you want to do? And that's the secret 
of Pluto. Because when you find out what you really want, which you'll never change, you win. You see, actually, I watched something recently, which came to me, synchronously, coincidentally, on YouTube. I was watching somebody talking about how to be a winner. To be a winner, you need to do what you love. And when you do what you love, you will never quit. Now, this is interesting. When you do what you love, you never quit. So if you start a business and you have lots of success, you have lots of money, if you don't love it, it will be destroyed. By who? By Pluto. You see, if you do something you do not want to do, Pluto destroys it. And then you are reborn. Because in this destruction, you realize, I, I wanted to do something else. Why have I been doing this shit show? What have I been doing? So the crisis is revealing your true self. And of course, when people come around you and they say, no, 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 your business is breaking down. You need the money. You need the money. You need to stay in that job. You need to stay in that relationship. Why are you making your own decisions? Why are you listening to your heart? Right? Because it's a secret. You see what this guy said about winning, that Almost every winner on this planet, every person who ever gets rich, every person who seems to succeed in every aspect of their life, they do not know why. They don't know why they win. They are winning unconsciously. And that's the essence here. If you are doing what you want, you don't need to know. You don't need to understand why you want it. You don't need to understand how it works. You just need to do it. And that fate will make you rich. Rich where? It will give you power. And that power will unlock Who? The sun. So Pluto, in connection with any aspects, it unlocks that. It says, oh, I see what's wrong here. Let me test you. Let me see just how precarious your self-image is. Have you the self-image of a winner or of a loser? Well, what does it mean to be a winner? It means... You never quit. What does it mean to never quit? To do what you never stop wanting to do. So that's all that Pluto tries to do to you. Now, a lot of people will, will not get this. <laughs> a lot of people will be like, what are you talking about? Nothing is happening for me. Oh, I'm hating this job I'm in, but I need to do it. I'm just going through it. Oh, I have this relationship, but there's nothing else. Like, what am I supposed to do? I don't want anything else. And other people will say, but I don't know what I want. And then you have to find out. You can either try to find out what you want, or you can wait for the crisis to happen. So eventually, Pluto destroys everything that is built on something that you didn't want. So everybody gets what they want. And that is fate. That is the secret of Pluto. Now, this is very important to understand because it's an alchemical principle. So this is an occult information. You see, if you do what you want, you are following your fate, but fate forces you to do what you want. Fate doesn't tolerate disharmony. 
a lack of cooperation. Uh, a need for control. <laughs> I mean, you can't control what you want. So you can't control fate. Oh no, I can't control what I want. I'm a victim. Uh, what? <laughs> if you do what you want, you are happy. You don't need anything else. So it doesn't matter that you can't control it. Okay, so... The sun helps to reveal this. So what happens next? What happens after this transit? Is everybody just, oh, I'm finally realizing I should be doing this. And then I'm doing this and I'm going to be happy. La, 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 la. No, this is only the beginning. You see, everybody's talking about awakening, ascension, stepping up but this is a process it takes time so we just entered the period for 20 years to figure this out here we are building here at the precipice of sun entering aquarius and pluto together we are looking at the foundation so everybody let's say the majority of people, are discovering the true purpose around this time. And if they don't, then maybe give them another 10 years. But at the end of this, in 2044, the collective should be completely changed at that time. Most people should be doing what they want. And if they don't, then probably the whole system will break down. Actually, the system will break down one way or another anyways, because Pluto is not going to tolerate anything less than what we have started. You see, this is much like a birthday. An astrological birthday. A birthing of a 20-year period. And in this birthing, the Sun is the center in Aquarius. An Aquarius represents higher dimensions. It represents a transpersonal knowledge of the self that doesn't come from this world. It comes from somewhere else. Whoever gave birth to this world, whoever created this realm, he created all the archetypes and the structures that bind you to it. Mother Nature has given you your desires and only Mother Nature can take it away. And so Mother Nature will force you to follow its instructions or it will take away your job. It will destroy your relationships and it will destroy your job. It will destroy the whole system, the entire community, which is founded on lies, deceptions, manipulations, facades, mimics, your friendships. That's going to be the focus of what's going to be destroyed by Pluto. So Pluto destroys everything that is not in alignment with your fate. Now, I have not seen a single person in a single book, in a single video, say it like that. I don't know anybody who said that Pluto it's just forcing you to do your fate. <laughs> I mean, was it really so difficult to figure this out? Did I have to come up with this? But of course, you heard it here first. So now you know, if you're watching this. So this makes things much easier. So then when things are breaking down, you're like, ah, thank you. A paradigm shift has happened. Your perception is changing. You're realizing, Ah, thank you, Pluto. You're finally destroying that, which was never supposed to last. Couldn't you have destroyed it earlier? Why did you take your time? The sooner it is destroyed, the better. So destruction is really what you want. Your own soul wants you to be destroyed, to be reborn. So, do you know? Do you know your true self. The true self is 
what Carl Jung refers to as the Gestalt. It is the ego. Yes, according to Carl Jung, the true self is the ego, which means the ego is a represent representative of your true desires, as far as you know them. And if you don't know them, well, the ego can only work with what it knows. <laughs> So if you only know falsehoods, if you don't know what you want, if you say, oh, I don't want anything, destruction is imminent. <laughs> you will lose. <laughs> that is the nature of Pluto. Okay, so it's a bit, uh, a bit of an urgency here. How many sun conjunction Pluto trends this is going to take through Aquarius? Until everybody gets the message, stop what you're doing, do this, not that. How stubborn do you think the programming is? Hmm? Five years, 10 years, 20 years at the end of this transit? Will the majority then be awake and... Uh, I don't think so. But what is... What is the aftermath of this ending of Capricorn Pluto? We've had 20 years of Capricorn Pluto. Has it destroyed everybody's career? Has it destroyed the control system, which is represented by Capricorn? Has it destroyed the government, the elite? I don't see anybody being destroyed, do you? That's right. The majority of people are still slaves to the system, slaves to their jobs. However, as you probably noticed, there has been significant shifts in a lot of more people are having their own business now, people are using the internet, people are looking for a way out. Because that's what fate, aka Pluto, forced everybody to do on an individual level. To get so frustrated with being a slave that they try to look for another way. Have you found a way at the end of this Pluto Capricorn transit? If you have not, <laughs> I don't know what to say, but astrologically speaking, that was your chance. You had 20 years to create your own income find an alternative way to make money and you missed it? It's not going to come again, except for once. At the end of 2024, there will be a very short period, I think around November or September, where Pluto very briefly retrogrades back into Capricorn. So this is your last chance. Is not yet over. If you don't have a way out, Pluto is going to come for a visit one more time to destroy whatever prevents you from having your own business, your own income. And after that, it's over. In 2025, there will be no other chance. Because then the focus of fate will no longer focus on the career. So I guess whoever is in a slave job, whoever has not their own income, then they, I guess they just, uh, that's their fate. <laughs> right? Yes. So no hard feelings, because then you are where you belong. <laughs> are you happy? <laughs> are you happy? A lot of people apparently are. So Pluto doesn't seem to be coming for them. But I hope it's coming for you. <laughs> I hope it's coming for me. I hope it's coming. So the more Pluto, the better. Please destroy my control mechanics, which I have created out of fear of making my own decisions. Which I don't even know 
what we're supposed to be. Again, Pluto is a secret. Ah. So you're supposed to do something, but you don't know what it's supposed to be. Mm, it's time to find out. This sun illumination is your ticket. This sun is telling you right now. Look, this is what you want. I am aware. At the end of a month, the party will be over. So if you don't know until February what it is you want, I'm sorry, but astrologically Pluto is not going to come back for your uh, slackers, <laughs> slackers, to broom it up. You broom it up now. What are you waiting for? Do you know? You should write in the comments below. I'm curious. I want to know, have you figured out what you want to do moving forward? And what it looks like? It's, it's found in your shadow. It can be quite dark. Because you see, most people will think you're crazy for wanting to do that thing. For it is so primitive. So simple. So childlike, perhaps innocent, but only on the surface. When you go really deep into what you want, you'll find out it's not innocent at all. It's quite heavy. And if you don't do it, it's going to be very, very heavy for you. <laughs> okay, so somebody asks, what is possible? If you have a Leo rising. Okay. That's interesting. Because actually. Myself. I have this Pluto transiting from my 7th house. Because I have cancer in 27 degrees. Ascendant. So I can tell you a little example. Of what happens to you. Over the next 20 years. By a house that Pluto transits in. So let's say it is in your 7th house. Like it is for me. What is going to happen is that it will destroy the way you look at relationships, the way you deal with people, the way you look at them, what you see. Because the sun is what you see, right? It's the truth. Pluto reveals the hidden truth. So you're supposed to see them for who they really are. And you're not going to like it a lot of the time, because sometimes they are rotten. But, of course, only on the surface. When you go deep behind that rot, you will find their soul. And in their essence, there is no rot. But, you need to see the rot. <laughs> so that's what's going to come up first. So that's a good example. If you have Pluto in any other house, that is where the rot of the control system, the lies, the facades, the mimics will be revealed to you. So you can see the essence of something. Okay? So let's say you have Pluto in the 10th house. What would be the essence of my public reputation, my career? my professional life, my job. What could be the essence there? The essence is, uh, what do you want it to be? Unconsciously, remember. What do you want unconsciously in that house to happen to you? And that's going to happen. Pluto makes it happen. So Pluto is going to force you. Remember the sign the symbol. Do you know the symbol of Pluto? It's this figure which rises from the bottom. It's like this. This is Pluto. This is Pluto. So this is what it's going to do in your chat. In a house where it transits in. It's going to look. Oh, here's the shit. Mm. Do it. And if you don't do it, let me destroy you a little bit. Let me bring you problems. To force you. So it's like uh, pulling up the whip. <laughs> and that's why we love Pluto. Yeah, and that's why everybody lo hates Scorpio aspects. Plutonic people, right? Everybody's like, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. I have so problems with the Scorpios. 
What is your problem with Scorpio? What's your problem with you? Why are you not? <clears throat> what are you waiting for? Are you letting it rot? So you are rotting. So you're stagnating. You're decaying. Right? So then this thing comes to put an end to this shit show. Because the facades are in the way. So that's why Pluto in the chart, by house, by aspect, shows you where are you controlling? Where are you rotting? Where are you hiding? And then Pluto makes a little test. Hmm. Let's bring the detective. Let's hire the police. You know, Pluto is like the police of the Zodiac. Let's have an arrest warrant for a, a Agent Smith uh, next door who's refusing to do the job that he loves to do because he wants the money that is instant gratification because he's so afraid of quitting. Let's force him to quit by making him as miserable as possible. So that's the police of Pluto. It sounds a lot like Saturn, doesn't it? Except Saturn, um, Saturn restricts you. Saturn makes you feel like, I have no options, I have no options. While Pluto is like, Just die. I don't care if you have options. I don't care if you're restricted. Just die. Just die. Just just feel the rot that you have created. <laughs> Basically. So are you feeling the rot now? <laughs> Where are you feeling it? If you feel some rot in this transit with Pluto, as it is now highlighted by the sun, Maybe you can have some psychic surgery. Get the tumor out. But that's all I can say about that. There's nothing else you need to know. Except one thing. Pluto, you can't think your way to Pluto. If you want to enter the underworld, you can't use your rational mind to get there on its own. You need the body. Because it's feminine. You need to feel Pluto. You need to feel the subtle sensations, the acid under your skin, the fire water that swirls like a whirlpool in your stomach that says, this is what I want to do. And then the whirlpool is in every cell of your body, not just in the root chakra where Pluto rules, but every cell. It is in your DNA, Pluto. It is what I call the prime directive. <laughs> yes, now you should call it that too, because it's so cool to call it that. Because in evolutionary astrology, Pluto represents the soul's deepest desire. But if the desire is so deep, you're not going to quit until you get it. And you're going to ruin your own life to get it. You'll destroy everything until you are there. It's in your DNA. But it's unconscious. It's unconscious. So how do you know? What's in your DNA? You need to do this exercise. Look around. Yeah, this is a somatic exercise. I call it checking. Check in. Check in. Look at the walls around you. Better if you're in nature. It works better in nature. <laughs> because I'm at my home. If there's trees around you, bushes, snow, as it is now. Leave your head. Enter the environment. As you enter the environment, you're connecting to the earth. You're connecting to the body. The earth is the root chakra. It's mother earth. Pluto represents the darkest, deepest, aspect of Mother Earth. But checking in, looking around, 
Not deep in your head. Not thinking. Just looking. Then you ask, what do I want? Don't think. That's what everybody does. Do what nobody does. Fear. What do I want? And your body will tell you. I don't care what your beliefs are. Your body will tell you. But it's subtle. You must listen to your body. And only when you listen, you must follow the sensations. There will be sensations in your body so subtle, you can easily miss them. But then you do it. So for example, what happens to me? My body does this. When I ask what I want, it does this. So you're thinking, what the fuck is this? You can do things with your body. You can ask it what it wants. It will tell you. But will you understand? Most of you, including me, <laughs> most of the time, will not. So then you have to ask, what, I, what, what are you doing, body? What do you want from me? You see, your desires are not your own. They are the property of Mother Earth. Your body is not your own. Your thoughts are not your own. Your feelings are not your own. Fate rules them. So who is in control? The body tells you. The prime directive that was chosen by the divine. It's only coming through the body. The body is only a mirror to the supernatural forces which are already controlling you. They're controlling you every second, every day. But can you feel them? Can you listen and act on them? And then you don't understand. So let me explain. So when you follow this check-in, you can go back and you can try this exercise in nature. Your body will do some kind of movements. And when these movements happen, you have to ask yourself, what does it feel like to do this? To do what my body says it wants. What I want. And where have I seen it before? Because you will see it in your family, in your childhood, because you are connected to Mother Earth. So Mother Earth is, is your desires. That's represented by Venus as well. But here Pluto represents the secrets of a family, the secret desires which many families never fulfill. But they are showing you in their actions all the time, unconsciously, what they want. Everybody shows you what they want in their actions. But you don't really know until you spend more time with them. So your family, they will have repeated this. Pluto represents this feminine aspect. So for most people, Mother Earth will be about the mother. <laughs> and the mother wanted something. And what your mother wanted, you wanted. And if you say now, no, 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 I'm nothing like my mother. Okay. But you still come from her body. You still carry her DNA. You may not be like her, but your body will show you. Anyways, this is not a discussion on how family trauma works, or family constellation, or family internal family systems. There's all these psychodynamics. I mean, this is not new knowledge, you know. It's, it's very old. 
we are all conditioned by the past and everybody wants to get rid of the past everybody wants to destroy their family inside them now how do you destroy something that you are and that's a problem and that's why people don't get what they want because they're trying to destroy what they want instead of letting Pluto destroy the facades and the lies and the control they're destroying themselves and in that process the mirror of life is showing them what they are doing day in and day out rejecting those parts of themselves which even their family wanted them to suppress but that which your mother and father wanted to suppress is from your mother and father so you see we live in a mental asylum everybody is mentally ill and your mother suppressed what she wanted when she saw you wanted it to <laughs> And your father probably suppressed when he saw that you wanted what he wanted. Well, maybe not for everyone. I mean, some people are, I don't know, like, <laughs> there are people that have a normal family that is not mentally ill. I have not seen it. But if they are, then this is not really applying to you, I suppose. But really, yeah, even in healthy families, the child still tries to separate from the parents and in this society takes over some other authority replaces the inner mother and the inner father because for most people the inner father and the inner, inner mother is very weak we are weak as a people because we come from a weak foundation but the foundation is only on the surface Strip away the house of cards, see through the facades, and at the bottom you'll find that what really kept all of this going is much stronger than you would have ever expected. And that is why you're still alive. After thousands of years you're still alive. Well, what are you doing? How did you survive this shit show? Because the shit show is only on the surface. What's beneath all that is Pluto. That is the desire that you don't know that you have. Make it known. Tap into this portal. Get into your body. And if you need help, if you can't figure this out on your own, I do one-on-one -on -one therapy work. I'm a somatic practitioner. I do somatic embodiment, the physiology. I look in your chart, I find the intellectual information, and then I do exercises with you to access it in your body. So if you're interested in that, happy to help you, you can reach out to me anytime. Now if you're interested in a reading, one-on-one, -on -one, private reading, nature chart reading, I'm yours. And you can do all the other work yourself. But at least if you book a reading with me, you get the knowledge of what the work is actually supposed to be because fortunately we have a strategy to tell us <laughs> we just not need to know how to read it so if you found this video helpful leave a like subscribe if you saw this on youtube uh, please the likes help a lot to boost my algorithm i need it so i would really appreciate it and i hope i see you in the next video bye bye